Hello friends, welcome to ELS English Literature Studies with Kaur Harpreet. Today we will discuss the second generation of romantic poets, its main features, what are the things which are common between first generation of romantic poets and second generation of romantic poets and second generation poets Lord Byron, P.B. Shelley and John Keats. So let's get started with today's topic. The first generation of romantic poets. The first generation of romantic poets were primarily S.T. Coleridge, William Wordsworth and William Blake. The second generation was at its culmination in the 1820s with poets such as P.B. Shelley, Lord Byron and John Keats. The movement showed an interest in Gothic, medieval art and nature. Whereas the first generation emerged slowly, the second generation flourished. There seems to be a theme of imagination. There seems to be a theme of the human power that can enable man to perceive and to share in it. The second generation of the romantic poets came to be about the youth of the age. The young writers especially. The young writers uh, whose ideals were youthful. Their language and style was more complex and refined. All the poets were very particular in their choice of elegant structures. Now let us discuss about main features of this second generation. First feature is they were revolutionary rebels. For these second generation of romantic poets, for them nature was the main interest. Third point, reason was replaced by imagination, emotion and individual sensibility. The romantics preferred the glory of the imperfect rather than looking for perfection. Fifth point is or fifth characteristic of uh, this generation is that they believed that poetry could inspire the readers but not teach a moral lesson. And last is individualism replaced objective subject matter, right? Now let us discuss themes which are common between the first generation and second generation. Let us discuss it quickly. Friends, romantic poets of the first generation are already discussed by me. And on that basis, let us discuss themes which are common between the first and second generation. There are four main themes, right? Number one is first thing in common was the concept of the role of the poet. First is first thing in common was the concept of the role of the poet second is the idea of the cognitive power of imagination third common theme is individualism in both generations and last is both generations uh, there is an inspiration to the infinite friends now it's time to discuss second generation romantic poets individually uh, that is P.B. Shelley Lord Byron and John Keats. In the first two decades of the 19th century, a second generation of romantic, uh, romantic writers emerged led by Byron, Keats and Shelley. These were at school when Wordsworth and Coleridge published lyrical ballads that was published in 1798. And the Intervening years between its publication and Byron's explosion onto the European literary scene with Child Herald's pilgrimage witnessed a revolutionary spirit in Europe. Now, uh, let us discuss Child Herald's pilgrimage in brief. It is an unfinished poem written in Spenserian stanzas. It is a meditation on the Peninsular War and on the European crisis in general and uh, considers wider questions connected with freedom, connected with nature and heroism, right? And the, this poem, Child Herald's Pilgrimage, this poem re recounts the travels of a misanthropic, self-exiled pilgrim, Child Herald, the first of the Byronic heroes. The central character has much in common with Lord Byron, though he repeatedly denied any identification with Child Herald, right? These younger romantic 
poets try to redefine romanticism and challenge the lake poets friends lake poets are discussed but for my new subscribers let us revise quickly that um, the lake poets the lake poets were a group of english poets who all lived in the lake district of england in the first half of the 19th century as a group they followed no single school of thought or literary practice they were named by the edinburgh review right the three main figures of what has become known as the lake school were william wordsworth st coleridge and robert southey um and they were associated with several other poets and uh, other writers including dorothy wordsworth charles lamb mary lamb then coleridge wilson and thomas de quincey and the beauty of the lake district has also inspired many other writers over the years beyond the core lake poets right pb shelley accuses wordsworth of betraying the hopes of the revolution uh, then keats questioned wordsworth's concept of the egoistical sublime while lord byron regrets that wordsworth confined his muse to such trifling subjects right uh george gordon byron often referred to as lord byron published his first collection of poems in 1807 in 1809 he took up his seat in the house of lords then spent the next two years touring uh, during this period the peninsular war provoked by france invasion of spain and portugal forced britain to uh, take a more active role in the napoleonic wars right the british government sees itself as engaged in a war in defense of liberty against tyranny lord byron considers the british position hypocritical and he continues to sympathize with the republican ideals of the french revolution even retaining a measure of respect for napoleon whom he regards as a flawed and misunderstood hero right Lord Byron was the prototype of the romantic poet he was heavily involved with contemporary social issues and like the heroes of his long narrative poems as i have discussed child heralds pilgrimage and then don juan was a melancholic and solitary figure whose actions often defined social conventions like pb shelley he left england he and he lived on the continent he pursued adventure in italy and greece lord byron died in 1824 um because of fever and um, he was giving support to greek insurgents in their fight for independence in, at the end of his life right next is friends pb shelley uh pb shelley a committed atheist and a son of a baronet and member of parliament was expelled from oxford university for writing an anti religious pamphlet the necessity of atheism right uh, he first came to public attention as a serious poet in 1813 with the publication of queen map which imagines a future society founded on principles of free love atheism and vegetarianism in 1816 he published a visionary poem alaster or the spirit of solitude the poem explores the dilemma facing the solitary poet who in pursuit of his intellectual ideals attempts to live without human sympathy and dies alone on a summer visit to geneva uh, later the, um, he uh, pb shelley and mary godwin first met uh, byron and in december 1816 Shelley's estranged wife Harriet commits suicide, and shortly after he marries Mary. Friends, I have discussed P. B. Shelley, and next I am going to discuss John Keats. If you want to know more about their uh, life and their uh, famous works, you can check my previous videos. Uh, a lot of information is already available there, right? And today I am discussing Shelley as, a, in brief, as a poet of second generation, right? P. B. Shelley was the most revolutionary and non-conformist of the Romantic poets. He was an individualist and idealist who rejected the institution of family, church, marriage, and the 
Christian faith and rebelled against all forms of tyranny. His ideas were anarchic and he was considered dangerous by the conservative society of his time. Many of his poems address social and political issues. Right. Next is John Keats. This is the last um, point I'm going to discuss. John Keats, one of a new group of romantic writers. In 1818, Keats falls in love with Fanny Brown. Keats letters to her Shelley and others are among the most important in literary history, right? John Keats has a brief life. The main theme of his poetry is a conflict between the real world, real world of suffering, death and decay and the ideal world of beauty, imagination and youth, right? Um, he is a romantic poet because of his fondness of sensation, his love for the Middle Ages. He gives neither any message nor advice to his readers. His poetry lacks morality. His words are not sarcastic. He does poetry for the sake of poetry only. His exaltation of beauty above all human qualities inspired nearly all the English 19th century poets. After his death, he became the idol of writers such as Tennyson, Rossetti, the pre raphaelites as well as the Oscar Wilde. Uh, he did not uh, perceive beauty as a mere aesthetic concept. To him, it was a moral one as well. It wasn't an end in itself, but a source of good and consolation. And generation after generation could communicate not only the joy of art, but above all of life itself. So friends, this is all about today's topic. I hope you will like my content. If you like it, please hit the like button, share and subscribe my channel. And if you are new to my channel, please hit the bell button so that you can get notifications for my upcoming videos. Thanks a lot for watching.